come back to a hoops journey. As I was telling these fine young men offline here, this is going to be a unique experience for myself as a host. And I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to have all three of them. I would have liked to have had them individually, but let's do it. This is going to be fantastic. A family in terms of when you think of the name of our show, A Hoops Journey, maybe you know the two sons a little bit better than you know Pops, but Pops has some stories to share as well. And I'm sure he's looking forward to talking about them for about three minutes. Um, He's (laughs) probably going to summarize his career in the shortest (laughs) hoops journey possible. We have the Scrub family with us today. And it's an absolute pleasure and honor for uh, for you guys to be here. Thanks for being with us. How is everybody doing? Good, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, good. Good. And let's just acknowledge um, Lloyd, dad, is in the middle of um, you know, his family packing up and and making a move out east and making a big transition. So he's a busy man. And the two boys just getting back from, you know, representing our country for, I don't know, they can tell us how many times they've done it. And it seems like whenever they get the call, they always answer it, which is appreciated on behalf of Canada Hoop fans. So um, we know that maybe these things are fun for people, but also it does require people to take time out of their days to do it. So so thank you for being with us and taking time out of your day. I know um, some of you are getting jet lagged ish and uh, getting back into your regular routines. I'm uh, St. Thomas More is paying me right now, but don't tell anyone that that's okay. Um, <laughs> I do have a spare block um, and uh, it'll be fun. So let's get right into it. Let's just quickly go around and just talk about where everybody's at with their life right now and, and how things are going. And um, and then we'll move forward from there. Maybe uh, Lloyd, you can uh, just sort of introduce and uh, let us know how life is for you these days. Yeah, life is pretty good. I would say uh, since, uh, you know, I used to coach high school basketball, so this would be like a pretty busy time uh, for me right now. So I'm enjoying uh, just being on the sidelines and and uh, lurking in on different videos and uh, things like that in between, uh, you know, packing up house and, and, and moving out and just, you know, seeing what everybody's up to. So, uh, but uh, yeah, but life's good. Yeah. Good, man. Yeah. I'm looking forward to being able to lurk too. <laughs> no, nah, it's a good time of year. Yeah. And the boys, how are you? Good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as you said, we just got back from uh, our national team window. Um, so now we're back in Spain um, and just getting ready to finish off the last couple months of our season. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. We're in the middle of a, a playoff race right now. So we're just trying to finish off as strong as possible. Number two. Yeah. Yep, same. Uh, yeah, we just got back. Just trying to kind of adjust to the the time and getting back into to practice and stuff like that, and getting back into the rhythm with the team. But uh, yeah, it's good to be back, and yeah, excited for the last couple of months of the season. Do you find you guys, as you get older, being really uh, connected and sort of addicted to a routine? Like, are you finding yourself becoming very routine as you're, you know, I mean, you're you're young compared to the guys on the top of the screen here, but uh, well, I don't know. You're in the bottom of my screen. I don't know where we are for you, but um, is it is it when you go and travel like that and get back? Is it like let's get back right into that routine as quick as possible? And is that how you do things, or do you just sort of nap when you can nap and sleep when you can sleep, or how does that work? As I'm getting older, like the recovery time takes a bit longer in mm. terms of uh, just feeling physically ready to play. So I think. Um, just this year, I just tried to started to kind of stretch a bit more, do a bit more uh, mobility stuff, just to to try and stay ready. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard to tell. Like, it's not like I wouldn't say I'm. Uh, I wouldn't say it takes too long, but I just feel like I need to start getting in that mindset of just being uh, as precise as possible and trying to start developing routines for uh, for when I get older. Nice. Oh, when he gets older, look at this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Shots fired. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> what you felt? Yeah, same same kind of thing for me. I think mm. um I have to kind of listen to my body more. I think I developed a lot of bad habits in, in high school and, and university mm. in terms of um like just kind of like just going and, and playing without doing a proper warm-up and not going to physio. Um, like you kind of just go out and play and then you kind of go home and just relax, you know, but now I think, um, you really have to focus on, um, warming up properly. If you have any nagging injuries, kind of taking care of them because, um, they can build up like a, at my first year out of college, I had, I had to get knee surgery, um, because, uh, there was a lot of cartilage degradation in my knee and it's something that 
uh, I knew I had problems with for, for a long time and I never really took care of it. So, um, yeah, now I want to focus on just being more, um, kind of, yeah, trying to get a routine, make sure you're, you're taking care of those things. And, uh, so it can play as long as possible. Mm -hmm. It's funny, man. We've, um, we've tried to implement like just little parts of yoga and stuff with our guys, with our varsity team. And like, I'll get the mat out. I'm no physical specimen these days. And I'm like, how am I more flexible than you guys? But I, it's true. Like when you're, <laughs> when you're just young, right. You just take it for granted because your body bounces back so quickly, right? Like our starting QB yeah. who plays, he's, he's telling me coach pregame. I have, I have Don's Mickey, Mickey D's before every football game. I'm like, come <laughs> on, you're the starting quarterback, man. Like <laughs> God, God, stick with it, man. I'm like, Oh my God. Right. But that's good reflection. Cause I, I feel like a real old dog telling these guys, you know, and maybe it'll soak in one day, but I think I still think they, they just, cause their bodies do recover so quick. They think I'm lying to them, but it'll get them. It'll get them. Yeah. 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 You start feeling it eventually, but it, I think it takes, sometimes it takes like a, a big injury or like sure. a, you get to a point where you, you like, it really hurts to to play, you know, before you start to change your, your habits. So yeah. And you hopefully just become you just a get to that point just become a grumpy yeah. coach and then you just yeah <laughs> <laughs> lloyd let's yeah. talk about you really quickly man um as you sit here hopefully you know looking at your two boys and lo maybe lots going through your mind i'm sure you've had many moments in your life where you've just reflected about yourselves as a family but let's talk about you a little bit and sort of like your upbringing and, and how basketball sort of started to come into your life because you are the foundation for that right i mean i think if you know, you weren't their father. They probably may, who knows how their lives work out or what they get exposed to. But because basketball was a part of you, it's, it's a huge part of the story. So how did that foundation start for you? And why did basketball start to uh, be something that you were interested in? Um, well, I would also add that uh, uh, their mom, Diane Murphy, also was a, was a basketball player. Uh, so I think that, that was important. And interesting, when we, you know, when we had the boys, we said, you know, well, we're not going to make them you know, you know, necessarily choose basketball or whatever, right? I mean, it ended up like that. And of course we had like Fisher Price hoops and everything all over the place, but you know, they did play lots of different sports. Uh, for Posters me- Posters on the wall, basketball on the TV, exactly, basketball's yes. everywhere, yeah. but- every, they every, room, every room was like a- They court. don't have to play, but- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I think it was, I was pretty lucky, right? Like, I, um, so I went to school and- elementary school in Richmond and uh, at William Bridge Elementary. And, you know, they had like, so this would be in the seventies and they had uh, like adjustable bat. They had a gym and they had hoops and the hoops were adjustable. So we could, you know, like even as little grade six and stuff, we could put the hoops low enough so that we could dunk and do that kind of stuff. Right. Have the crank, like the crank on it. The cr yeah. Like yeah. It was, I don't think like a lot of schools had that. Like man, maybe, you know, but it, you know, like it was a new uh, subdivision and new, new uh, resources were going up and stuff. So, um, so that was my start. It was just fluke. I mean, I played with, uh, you know, at that age, I had a couple of, uh, monsters in my school like these were, these guys were like fully developed when they were in you know elementary school one of them they both played uh volleyball at ubc actually uh, uh brad willock and uh, ray bryant i think so they you know so they were in elementary school they must have been six whatever right and yeah. so i remember one playing and i don't remember how we started i don't know if we had like a team how we practiced they were a year older so i would have been in grade six they were in grade seven and uh i made my greatest move ever like they were these monsters were around, around me I jumped to shoot. Of course, they're there, right? So they jumped up. I landed. And then when they came down, I went up again and scored. And that was my first uh, <laughs> first basket I remember, right? Of course, it was against the rules, but uh, I, felt, I felt pretty good about that. Um, and then, uh, you know, so... You know, so that was my my start. I don't really remember a lot about that. I remember that play because, you know, I, I learned, oh, that's an up and down move at that point. Then... Um, you know, we had junior high schools back in the day. So uh, after you finished seven, you went from in Richmond anyway. You went uh, eight to ten. So I went to McRoberts and and uh, uh, played there. Had some good, uh, you know, very good teachers that just, you know, I don't know if they were basketball people, but you know, we had teams and and uh, you know, eight and nine. We had uh, I remember Mr. Ingalls was our coach and he'd play with us. So we'd always we'd always we always had places to play, right? And mm -hmm. and uh, and it wasn't like, um, 
like we were there because we wanted to. There wasn't anybody forcing us. We just, you know, liked the sport, gravitated to it and started to play. And that's where I met uh, Doug Beers, actually. He was my uh, grade 10 coach there. And he's the one who took us to all of the, like he was a basketball fanatic. He took us to all the St. Thomas War games and that kind of stuff. And he, he coached us. And I think I really developed a, a love for the game there and started it. And not just, uh, you know, of course, we watched basketball and, you know, back in the day, we didn't have cable. Cable, we'd have like the rabbit ears. So to watch some <laughs> of the, the Seattle SuperSonics and and those games, we'd have to, you know, we'd have these TVs where if you put like a piece of rolled up paper in between the channel changer, it got the right angle, then you could watch some American games. But uh, um, they don't know the struggle, man. They don't, they don't know, know the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> no league pass back then. No league pass, yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so I just remember. Uh, you know, uh, getting these op- opportunities to, to play and, and really liking the thing. At, at, during those times, that's when uh, UCLA was in their heyday. And, and you know, so then I just didn't play. Like, I, I would uh, I'd read books. Like, I read John Wooden's Pyramid of Success. And mm-hmm. it was more, it was, for me, it was like, oh, I really like this thing and I want to find out more. You know, my dad would get me, uh, I, I there's probably somewhere in my mom's uh, store, somewhere all the, the NBA books of it. They used to have published this book about this thick with uh, just all the players in the NBA and their stats from the year. And my dad would get me those and I'd just be reading, reading stuff. So it was really um, uh, like a, a labor of love. And I started, you know, so all this was me, like my parents weren't, uh, were in sports people. They came from the Caribbean, right. You know, like they even banned me from like, I wanted to play, you know, I played flag football. I wanted to play uh, tackle football. And they said, no, it seemed too dangerous or whatever. But and they never the first time they actually saw me play was at UBC. I think my last year, like they never drove me to sports. So it was all me, all kids, and you know me and kids like me just going to events. And there was no really big parent following, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so then I ended up at uh, um, Richmond High. Uh, played for Bill Disbro uh, a couple of years, grade eleven and twelve, and uh, and. Uh, then ended up at UBC there. And I, and I guess through that, you know, so, um, you know, I, I think it was those high spheres where I, you know, my, my, uh, where I started playing full, you know, all year round, that's where I started to go to uh, Kitts beach. And, you know, I haven't been there like during the week, like when high school, obviously you have nothing, nothing going on, but, uh, it was like, you could always find the game there and lots of American guys would come down. And so I think that's where I really, you know, you know, was, um, you know, playing a lot every day and, and, uh, and really, you know, developed a love for the game, playing against it. And a lot of times you're playing, I, you know, it's such a good thing to play against older players, even if they're, they're uh, slower or whatever, right. They just knew how to play and, and they'd really, you know, I remember playing one time there against a, uh, a guy who played, I, I, I can't remember his name now, but he played uh, NFL. He won that thing and he was just, you know, a big guy, slow guy, couldn't, you know, and, you know, I was all cocky, you know, I'll, I'm going to, uh, you know, like, like at one point, I don't know how we got into this thing, but we were going to play one-on-one, right? And I thought, I'm going like, to, like, kill this guy. Like, he's like, you know, and of course, of course, all he does is, you know, I'm taking jumpers and he's backing me into the hoop and just doing laps. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so that was, a, that was a good humbling experience, right? And so, okay, so there's lots of different ways to play basketball. And um, so, uh you know, so we did, you know, we did okay at Richmond High. We were just, you know, it was before the time where, you know, they really became uh, dominant. There was there was a bunch of us who really loved to play and, you know, uh, from different schools in Richmond, different uh, things. And uh, uh, we, uh, um, you know, I think we maybe had seven guys on our team by the end of the, you know, when we went to provincials. We, I think we, our first provincial game or second provincial game uh, when we were in grade 12, you know, um, we played against, I think his name is Greg Walters, this huge guy from the island. He was a 6'11". He just, you know, killed us. We have all these, our our, our starting center was like, a, was Bob Skemp. He was a, a a center in football, you know, and he was guarding yeah. until we, we got killed. Yeah, but, five uh, fouls. Yeah. <laughs> as, you know, and, you know, I, you know, as growing up, I wanted to play in, you know, American college. I wanted to go to the NBA and, you know, it was, that was, you know, my path right I didn't, you, mm-hmm. know, you know uh so um you know ended up at ubc 
right? And and played there. And Peter Mons is my first coach. I thought he was, you know, he was an ex, ex like taught me like the first time, you know, I was a guard and uh taught me about posting up and just different parts of basketball, right? So things you could use as a as a as a player, not just being out on the perimeter and um uh UBC I played for uh two years and the first two years there were two different coaches. Uh Peter was first year, then um uh another coach, uh, Bob Malinsky, second year, and then he left, and then there was a third coach came in. Uh and so I decided not to play that year to sit out because there was just too much turmoil turmoil. And I sat out a year and then ended up going to UVic for my final three years. So that's the thing. And we won a couple of national championships there and uh, couldn't quite lost to UBC when we came back in our, our third year um, uh, to try and make it back there. But, uh, but uh, I mean, that's kind of my journey. I mean, there's lots of stuff in between there, but I could talk for mm-hmm. like, like hours and, you know, I wouldn't want to, but there's, you know, there's, <laughs> that's kind of the Coles notes of, uh, you know, you know, almost uh, 50 years of basketball. Yeah, I love it. Um, and just love, appreciate that I didn't have to bring it up, but just kind of the championship pedigree early on, right? And and sort of you knowing what it takes to get to that level. Um, and when you think of the boys in their path and how many titles they've, or big games they've had the opportunity to be a part of, right? Um, what, and, you, and I like a couple of things that you touched on, just the importance of mentors and just sort of those community people that are looking out for young, you know, men and women, boys and girls, and giving them an opportunity to hoop, right? Opening a gym, taking them somewhere yeah. um, and just letting them play, right? Not structured, just sort of, here's a gym, get, get 12, 14, whatever it is, you know, and just play, right? And that's important. And I think sometimes we're kind of missing that a little bit. And we push our kids all the time to not always just compete against each other, like go up to Bonzer and play against some grown man who's maybe not as good as you, but like, is just going to physically beat you. Right. And so that's important. Um, At what point when you're in high school, was there a moment where you thought, was it, I want to play post-secondary? I mean, you touched on that. Was it early on? Was it grade 11? Um, Did you start to get interest? Like what's recruiting like, you know, in that time? Uh, There wasn't really uh... I mean, uh, you know, like what, leaving high school, I did, uh, you know, so, um, you know, had opportunities to, you know, like Simon Fraser coaches spoke to me and, you know, there's things like that, but it wasn't really the same, right? Like, I, yeah. I think, uh, um, and I was on, you know, there was not really, you're kind of by yourself. I think there was maybe uh, an opportunity to play at, um, in uh, one of the, is it MRU? So they're like their university now. So they were a, a junior junior college back in the day. So yeah. Coach Kenyon out there, whatever. So th- these things just kind of came up. And I think that was through my um, uh, um, association with, uh, you know, people like Howard Kelsey, who, you know, was a pretty big figure in my, you know, coming through uh, sure. uh, growing up in basketball. Like when we, uh, so I can't remember. So it must've been high school when I was first exposed to him and he would do these amazing ball handling drills like you know like he had an amazing high school career right like he and we shirt on or shirt off shirt uh, hard with a shirt Uh, yeah i've seen i think it was a shirt on guy okay but but if we're at the beach if we were it's off it was no question (laughs) starts off when we were playing when we were playing uh rap ball at ubc or memorial gym then the shirt the shirt was on um but uh i'm just jealous yeah yeah Yeah. So, I, you know, you, you ask about when it, uh, like, I think I always thought that that's what I was going to do. Like, I didn't really know. I just thought that, yeah. you know, I was just a high school kid. There wasn't all this like social media and stuff saying whatever. I just, that was the plan. So it was going to happen. I, I didn't know what I needed to do to get to say an American college. I just knew sure. that, you know, so, you know, uh, Al Tate, I played with Al Tate when at Richmond High and uh, he ended up going to Oregon State. So I knew that, uh, but I didn't know about what that process was like. I assume he had, I don't know how many opportunities he had. I know he ended up there. I don't know how it happened, right? So, you know, I'm sure with uh, with the help of Bill and and that, that happened, I mean, he was a great player. He was he was scoring like 60 points a game when uh, there was no three-point line. You know, like he was just like mid-range twos and going to the hoop, you know, lay, lay up. So he was, he was working hard. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I I think I just always thought I would be going to post-secondary. I didn't know, you know, you know, of course, you know, we'd go down and, uh, you know, I play with a guy 
uh, Eric Coleman. He was a, a player at uh, Vancouver College back in the day, so we're the same same age. And and we drive down to the Marv Harshman camp in uh, Washington State. He had a he had a Corvette that we we get you know I can't remember, you know we get in the uh, in this thing drive across the border the two of us and, and go and uh, play in these camps right. And it was a great thing because you know when we got to the states, like you really saw how much faster the game was. So we'd come mm-hmm. back, you know, I know I'd come back and I'd be playing the game at like much faster than everybody else. Right. So it was such a, a great thing. And that, you know, and I, and I think I did well against my peers in my Richmond and Vancouver and stuff like that. So, so I always thought that, okay, well, you know, not thinking that there's also a bigger world out there in terms of, you know, so, so I think that I always thought I would have that opportunity. Yeah. Um, awesome reflection. Love it. Picturing you in the Corvette rolling down. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did they even have a border then? Or <laughs> Well, I think, yeah, I think they had a border. Yeah. You know, I don't Just even wave know. as you go through? Yeah. I think I had my CAD <laughs> citizenship card. I don't even know if I had a passport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I remember one year Craig Hodges came up for the basketball BC clinic, but he had he was delayed a day. And this is like after his Bulls career. Never had a passport in his life. Oh, really? Yeah. So he had to like, they took 24 hours to get him a passport. Never had one. Like just okay. traveled with them. I'm like, how does that work? I guess, I guess but, when you're at the Chicago Bulls, you don't need a passport. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like they weren't traveling. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. And let, let's jump into the next part. So, you know, you finish, you finish your career. Um, what's the career move for you? And how do the boys, once they start, you know, are born and come into your life, how are they ending up in gyms? And what do you do for the next part of your life in terms of career um, and, and stay with the game? I mean, you mentioned 50 years. Yeah. looking at you so that means you started the game when you were like two right so <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I wish, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so yeah how, like talk about that sort of and how the boys sort of next thing you know they're the little guys in the corner or were they the little guys in the corner dribbling around and 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 why you chose the career path and and stay to stay in the game yeah well initially i mean i went to university i took uh engineering at ubc and then when i went to uvic i, I took uh computer science and uh, math. So, um, Ooh, who's uh, the, okay. Time out. Who got the better GPA in university boys? Who got, uh, not me. Yeah. <laughs> One. Uh, yeah, not me either. No, <laughs> not me. no but, but I have to say, I have to say yeah. there was no, no grade inflation, like what's happening. Right now. <laughs> oh, there's no, there's, oh. No, there's no negotiation, no negotiation of grades with the teachers and all this kind of nonsense. <laughs> Sounding salty here. Oh, here we go. <laughs> A care- Boy, are, careful, are- you see, you keep talking like that. They're going to call you an old head here. Okay. You can't, you <laughs> no. can't compare anything from back to now, you know, come on, man. All right. So, so, oh, wow. you know, so after, after I finished at, uh, at, uh, you know, UVic, I, um, I, 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 I flew over to, uh, to England to, I got like a tryout with, uh, a team there and, uh, uh, I guess, you know, so I hadn't been playing. I, I mean, I had been playing, but we were, we had by this time moved to Montreal. We were, uh, I, my wife was working for a, a company up in Northern Quebec. So I was basically just playing in the gym by myself, going to community centers and doing that kind of stuff. And so I went over there, not that that would have made a difference. And I think they probably decided that, well, you're just as good as the guys that are over here. So, you know, so that was, that was, that was the end of that. Um, so then, uh, you know, we started our lives out in Montreal. That's where Tommy was born. Um, didn't really do much uh, basketball stuff there. I play. I, actually, I, I coached at uh, McGill for um, so when I just I was finished. Say, didn't do much basketball stuff. Just yeah. the university team, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I <laughs> helped Ken Shilder off for a couple of years out at uh, out at uh, McGill, and and you know, so now I'm in my you know early 30s, and I'm still hooping, right? So I'm still playing in, in, uh, in, uh, Shawnee Laval at op- outdoor courts there and, and, you know, hooping with the guys at McGill and doing that kind of stuff. And so just sort of staying in it, but not really, uh, you know, not thinking that basketball is going to be a thing. Um, so we came out and Phil was, up, uh, born in Vancouver. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, I think the, I got back into basketball through just coaching the boys. Uh, so when they, came about, we, you know, we knew it wanted the sports and, mm-hmm. and Diane had said, uh, you got to coach the, the kids. Right. So they start. I think their first sport was soccer. And then they went into fastball and, uh, 
And I was like resistant because I, you know, I, I came from like a competitive university environment. I think I, I thought, you know, in my brain, I was just going to be like massacring these kids, right? Like these four <laughs> and five year olds, like, like you got to work, you know, like, you know, I, I didn't know, but she, you know, she taught it. And, and then I really, you know, enjoyed it. Right. Like, you know, I, 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 I wasn't, uh, you know, I sort of surprised myself. I thought I would be different, but, you know, mm-hmm. I sort of adapted to the, the, the level and the maturity of the kids and, and it really became something where, you know, at that level, when I was coaching them, uh, and then we did junior Grizzlies and all that sort of thing. But that mm-hmm. level, of coaching them, uh, it was just more about participation and the kids have fun. And, and, you know, the boys probably took the brunt of that and that, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, like if, if the goal was to win, then, then they would be on a lot more, but we had our rotation. They just, you know, line them up and okay, next five, next five. Mm-hmm. And, and what I found was that, you know, and obviously the more people you play, the more people that develop. And, you know, you know, we didn't necessarily do well during the, you know, the round Robin and, the, you know, Steve Nash league and that sort of stuff. But near the end, like everybody could feel comfortably on the court and, and we didn't have to, you know, rely on just two players to, we just keep our same thing. And, and we'd usually uh, do pretty well. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you guys remember those days? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while, but I, uh, yeah, I always remember like no matter what sport we played earlier in the season, we were always really bad, but I think <laughs> by the end, even though we didn't win, we were always kind of like in, uh, we'd always improved our level by a lot compared to most other teams. So we were always in almost, mm-hmm. almost being able to beat the best teams by the end of the year. So I think that was pretty, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I think it was good. It was, it was I think it was different than most how most most uh, coaches did it. So I think it helped a lot of players and helped mm. the team. Yeah. Uh, what they're blocking out is the times that we'd have our games in the, in the house where we'd play on the official <laughs> flight and there was no, there was no letting them go. And uh, the boys would be trying to score the hoops. They'd be getting blocked and stuff. And, and uh, <laughs> Bill would be getting quite uh, bitter so, sometimes with, uh, with Phil. You can't, uh, it was a clean, you can't like complain, man. It's a clean block. Doesn't matter how small. Yeah, yeah. No blood, no foul. <laughs> I, Lloyd, I appreciate the defensive mentality and the aggression, but you may have lost some of your followers when you said Fisher Price, dog. That may, that may, <laughs> sure, that sure. may affect, you know. Was well, that right? <laughs> well, no, was everybody playing on their knees or what? Like, what, how big was this Fisher Price hoop? Oh, also we had we had several. We had one, oh, at, okay. one at grandma's. So different levels. One at grandma's was uh, was the the more the higher one. Then we had the okay. little ones. But we're talking about these guys were like you know tiny at that point, right? So there was yeah, so yeah. I, yes, I was I was bullying them, but it was, uh, <laughs> it was. I think I think in the end, I think at the end it did work out. Then we had the uh, the garage hoop that was in our garage with the the low ceiling, and they learned their flat the, the flat jumper direct trajectory there. Had a three point <laughs> line and everything. <laughs> and then, uh, and then we graduated to the uh, we got one of the outdoor ones where that's where the boys did most of their uh, their playing there with the uh, the adjustable up and down. But I think we kept it at the ten foot. At the 10 that's foot. awesome. I love yeah. it. The yeah. flat jumper. That's great. Um, <laughs> okay, boys. Well, let's get into it with you guys. I mean, you know, your dad's done a good job of sort of just capturing a little bit of your youth and, and, and sounds like basketball was really something you guys were into. Um, let's get right into sort of those high school years or early high school years and, and um, why you appreciated and loved the game. Like, what was it? Was it because, you know, the foundation was set? Was it the teammates? Was it the joy of just having a ball and a hoop? Like what, what was the unique thing about basketball that, you know, made you wanted to be, you know, a high level player or continue to work at it at least at a young age? Yeah, for me, I guess it was a bit different. I think um, in high school, I played both football and basketball all uh, all five years. And I wouldn't say I wouldn't wouldn't say I spent or took more. Uh, I wouldn't say I like, cared more about one or the other. It was kind of just both playing playing both sports, and um, and I guess by the end of my my high school career, I just decided to play play university in basketball. But I feel um, yeah, I wasn't, I, th- I feel like I, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I didn't like basketball, but I feel like it was, I thought I was frustrated all the time when I was playing. I wasn't really, 
I just had trouble like really playing with confidence and hmm. it was kind of an, uh, had an up and down experience with that. But I think, um, I guess I, st- I stuck through it and like, uh, took habits from working, like working hard in school, working hard in, in football, um, just took good habits from those things. And I think it just, it, it pushed me through. And, um, by the end of it, I feel like I, uh, I made the right, the right decision sticking with basketball. Yeah, we could say that. Now, did you, yeah. <laughs> were you able at a young age to express that uh, verbally or was it more of just an individual thing that you worked through and found a way to sort of strive and like you said, just work hard in everything that you were doing or was it conversations? Um, yeah, I think both my parents knew I was, that I would struggle at times. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and I think they were honest with me. They weren't like, they didn't force me to do anything, but I think mm-hmm. um, they were, yeah, they were honest. They were, they, just told me that I think that if I really want to to improve and get better, I'd have to spend more time in the gym and take basketball a bit more seriously. Um, mm-hmm. And if I just wanted to play for fun, that was fine too. But then I just have to to live with the fact that I'd have kind of some off games and I wouldn't wouldn't really reach my potential. So I think, um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't like they didn't force me to do anything. They just kind of were honest, and I think I just have to work through it myself and. Um, it took me, I guess, until my third year of, of university to really, really kind of lock in and try and take my take my game to the next level. That's awesome reflection, man. I think sometimes mm-hmm. people go to the post secondary level, and you're like, depending on when you were born, you know, your 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 end of seventeen, maybe eighteen, and possibly nineteen if you're from Ontario or you know Quebec and cheating, playing a uh, grade thirteen, right? So. um and i think too like being a high school teacher like you give some good reflection being a you know a football school as well and i think just kids in general especially boys when they're when they're taller in eight and then their age group i think different expectations get put on like it's like my boy is a little bit taller for his age he's only six and i think people expect him to act a certain way because he looks bigger and it's like well he's still six you know and and so that comes with that too and i don't know if you felt that at all but just sort of like you're the kid that sort of stands out by everyone's eyes and everyone just assumes that you're going to be dealing with things a little e- easier and it's not always the case. So appreciate you sharing that. That's good reflection. And the fact that you're saying like, Hey, my third year university is when it clicked in. That's important. Right. I think, um, especially for young people that are looking to go post-secondary and think like, I'm going to get 30 minutes a game and I'm going to be super confident because they had some success in high school. Right. It's a, it's a struggle and we'll get into that, but, uh, that's dope. I appreciate you sharing that, man. Yeah, it was a really up and down journey for me. And I think, um, yeah, I think I just, like I said before, I just think the habits I took from, especially just my school, uh, being a really serious student, I think it was easy to, easy to transfer those good working habits to something else. So mm-hmm. that worked out. Awesome. Bro number two? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I always loved basketball. I think, it was always my favorite sport. Um, and in high school, um, like grade eight, nine and 10, um, I wasn't really, I didn't really necessarily click in that I wanted to be a really good player. Like I was just enjoying it because I had a lot of really good teammates and all my friends were on the team and I loved playing. And, um, like I was, I was pretty good, but it wasn't something that I was, putting too much, uh, extra time in. Um, like I played on the provincial team, uh, a couple of summers and that was, that was fun, but it wasn't like I was, uh, like asking my, my dad to, to go shoot or, or do any extra drills and stuff like that. Um, but I think once I, uh, started with the senior team, like grade 11, um, I started taking basketball a lot more seriously. Like, uh, I wanted to go division one. Um, I talked to obviously my dad and and Howard Kelsey too. And I I remember getting in the gym with him a few times and doing his kind of funny little drills where he would raise the hoop, like at a different angle and doing shooting drills like that. So when he lowered it, it would like feel good and, uh, some ball handling drills and, and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, like I, 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 and obviously I was lucky because, uh, our dad was a teacher at the school and a coach and he could, uh, 
let me in the gym whenever I wanted. Um, and that's when I kind of, you know, like YouTube and stuff started coming around. So I started watching YouTube videos of, of guys saying they would shoot or make 500 shots a day. And, um, I would just be in the gym kind of tossing the ball to myself, trying to make, um, 500 shots or whatever. And I started doing stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, for me, I was pretty, pretty focused from then on. Like I love playing basketball. I love, um, working like by myself in the gym. Like that was probably my favorite part of, of playing basketball. Like I really love spending the time in the gym by myself. Um, I think kind of leading into university, I wasn't sure. Um, I guess I wasn't sure. Like I, I, at that point, like recruiting for me was mostly in Canada. Um, and I obviously, I grew up watching the NCAA tournament and stuff like that. And, um, that was kind of the goal always to go. I wanted to go D one just cause it not necessarily because I knew it was the best basketball, but just because of the spectacle and, um, mm-hmm. to say you're going division one and the chance to play in the tournament and on TV and stuff. Um, but I think, yeah, once that wasn't like, like there were a few schools that were interested, but, um, none that like offered a scholarship or, um, anything that would make me think they really wanted me there. So, mm-hmm. um, I decided to, to kind of stay in Canada and, um, it was a, yeah, it was a really good decision. And I think that was probably the best thing for me. Cause I got to play, play right away in, in college, um, mm-hmm. which was not everyone gets to do, but it was a good opportunity for me. And, um, yeah, from there on out, I just, Obviously, college was a bit of a different game. It took some adjustment, but I uh, tried yeah, to keep right. the same work ethic <laughs> going into it. And uh, yeah, from there on out, I was I was kind of had the same focus. Mm-hmm. Awesome, thanks, guys. Now, Dad Lloyd, as a as a you know as a parent during these moments, and you know, obviously, both you just hear the reflections from both of them. Very different experiences from high school. Two different human beings, obviously, right? Like they're both their own people. What's your approach as a dad? Like, are you sort of a, I'm here for support if you need it and come chat? Or are you like a, like what, how do you approach those things? I'm just, I'm just interested as a, as a parent and a coach, like how do you manage those things? Cause obviously both, like I mentioned, very different experiences and, and what's your approach there? Cause you know, you're in the same building, you see them, you know, so it's a, it's a unique experience that you've yeah. all had. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my, approach is just to support like you know i remember we would uh um we'd be in the gym and so there would be times where you know during basketball season we'd go to the gym and we'd do workouts right and we'd be taking mm-hmm. shots and you know i was part of the crew we'd go and make you know how many makes and then you know and we always did makes okay you do take 50 20 you know 15 20 30 makes and then you switch to the next person the other guys are just chucking balls right and mm-hmm. uh, uh so um just to you know, so to show them what you do if you're serious about playing basketball, right? And we would do that a lot. And then, you know, once it came time, you know, as Tommy said, like he wasn't sure, right? And there was a divergence there, like where Phil went from there and decided, um, you know, okay, he's he kind of just started doing that on his own, right? Mm-hmm. And Tommy didn't want to, so that was fine, right? And Tommy, you know, and we were... You know, so I remember when you just hang around, Tommy, I can't even remember what our travel situation was in terms of uh, getting home after things. We all, we all we would just drive home together, I guess, eh? after things. So you would just uh, be doing all this stuff. Yeah, just yeah, be sitting there Hit, watching. Hitting the books. Hit the books, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so it wasn't about uh, you have to do this. It was basically just trying to be supportive because everybody, everybody develops at different times right like tommy you know i remember one time uh uh tommy's football coach got uh frustrated because of this you know like he wasn't tommy and he's leaving he wasn't sure if he wasn't if he was gonna do it and i said well so i told him i said you know I, I don't know if tommy wants to play basketball or not in university but you know he may be interested in playing football right and the coach was like you know like you know so um 
so yeah, I was just supportive of whatever they wanted because in the end, it's you know we were you know both their mother and I we were just trying to you know present them opportunities and the end decision would be theirs and they would have mm-hmm. to you know live with the consequences. I will say that uh, in that same thing that Tommy has never beaten me in one on one. That was that was the one that was the one route he chose not to right. So grade ten, Tommy. I think that's the last time we played. Still the champion, and then but Phil in grade ten like beat me. So that was it. That was the end of that. So because Phil went on his theory. So, but uh, we got it on video. You filmed that one, and we got it on video. I remember that. <laughs> I don't know, you filmed it for some reason. We were filming the workout, and then yeah, yeah, that was yeah. the first time I beat you on a workout. <laughs> so I had to. <laughs> Can we talk about the transition from being this gentle, loving father, you know, supportive to just all of a sudden, boom. And by the way, no one, no one beat me one-on-one. Uh, well, I yeah. just want and, the record uh, to like be just, in case, yeah. in case people may be thinking that, you know, Tommy was all, oh, I must've just destroyed his father. I said, well, it didn't happen. <laughs> and you can never get that time back. So that's the decision that you made. <laughs> wow. Well, that, was, that was phenomenal. That was, that was great. Oh, uh, so it's things were good yeah. unless anyone challenged you one-on-one, then it was go time. There, it was all there business. You, there you go. <laughs> oh, my but, God, that's amazing. But th- Tom, Tommy did inherit my, uh, did inherit my, uh, my penchant for slamming the ball and, uh, you know, whipping <laughs> the ball into the stands and, and stuff. So that was, I developed that at uh, UBC when, you know, my wife would be rebounding the ball for me and shooting and I'd be shooting and I'd, whatever, I'd miss him and then the ball would end up in the, in the thing and, <laughs> Tommy, Tommy did that a couple of times I've seen and almost hit uh, Dave Smart's uh, son, I believe, in one uh, episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's a good thing you could def- a good thing you could defend a little bit. Hey, he's still at his spot, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and so, yeah, okay, so boys, you know, like the high school level, you get to play in a couple crazy atmospheres, right? Get close a couple times. We won't go down that road. I've been there as a coach and a player as well. But, uh, you know, just being in, able to play, you know, at the at the Agrodome and, and get to be a part of that, pretty special. Um, and I know, you know, hopefully you've looked back and realized that your career has gone well and that high school years aren't, you know, the pinnacle. Um, but just sort of talk about those moments. And then, you know, obviously how – or do we end up at Carlton? Um, and we got to pause a little bit to talk about Coach Smart. So you're not getting away with without discussing that before we move on. Um, but just sort of talk about that high school experience and when you sort of saw yourselves. I mean, um, Phil, you talked about it a little bit already in terms of I, I had a vision and a goal. Tommy, it sounds like you were a little bit up and down. When does the phone get picked up for you? And and when when are you like, wow, this is what I, I do want to move forward with basketball? When did that choice happen for you? Probably just in my senior year, I think. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of the year, we kind of started to, uh, I don't remember being like recruited that heavily, maybe uh, uh, Trinity Western was probably the only school who reached out on, uh, without our without me initiating the the uh, conversation, but I think we sent emails to maybe uh, UVic, uh, Bishops, I think. Um, and I, I think Saskatchewan. Yeah. yeah, but I think, yeah, I think uh, in the end, like UVic was a possibility as well as, uh, and then Carlton, uh, we had some family friends who were going to gonna go there and who knew uh, knew a lot about the program and, and knew, knew Coach Smart. So I think um, we just got in touch and I think he gave me a chance to come in and try out and he let me know that I'd probably redshirt even if I came. But I think um, I went on the visit and uh, I decided to go. I didn't. I didn't Still, at this point, wasn't really, really uh, too set on basketball. Like I didn't really, still wasn't enjoying it too much. But I think um, I just was convinced that it was the best option for me. So I think um, it ended up being a good decision going going there. Is Carleton not also a really good academic school? Like it's a tough school, right? Or am I wrong on that? Uh, no, I think it's no. doesn't average. Happen. It's good. I think it's good for like journalism. Maybe, ask, and maybe I'll ask your brother. Politics, you. but it's not. Uh, I think it's pretty easy compared to, at least compared to Ottawa. I think it's a lot easier. But did you know what you wanted know. to do when when you're out of high school, like academically? Did you? Uh, 
uh, I applied to both uh, engineering programs and, and some science programs. So I, uh, I got got into Carleton in uh, just general science, and after my first year, I switched to uh, to neuroscience. So that was my Damn. that was my degree there. Nice. Okay, baby bro, was it was it the peer pressure? Like, how did you end up making your choice? Um, yeah, because I'm I'm guessing like w- was it different for you senior year? Did you have some looks? I find we have a point guard right now. He's a good player, and I'm like I find recruiting in Canada so interesting. I'm not putting anybody on blast. I'm not throwing. It's just it's an interesting process. Like I think Tommy touched on that a little bit, right? Just sort of having to sit down with your dad and actually contact people when you've got this pretty good player sitting there, you know, and people aren't really making an effort to reach out. I find it interesting. Maybe I'm off. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I always wanted to go division one. Um, and I guess the summer going into my grade 12 year, I was, I was on the provincial team and we, with, uh, with, um, coach Eberhardt, uh, and we did a lot of tournaments in the States. Um, so we played against some good teams and like you, you'd hear before all oh, this guy's a top 10 recruit or whatever. And, um, I did feel like I could play against those guys. So at that point I was still pretty confident that I, I might get a division one offer. Um, but I didn't get any interest throughout that summer. And then going into grade 12, um, Bill Disbro came and was, was helping coach the team. And, um, he said he would kind of, he had a lot of contacts in the U S so he would talk to schools and, um, and nothing really ever came of that. Like he would send, we had like a CD that he would send to yes. a bunch of teams and, um, nothing really came of it. Um, so at that point, like I kind of knew that I would probably have to stay in Canada, um, unless I wanted to like, maybe like, go to a school and, and red shirt or something in the States, or it, it wouldn't be like a me being recruited situation. Um, but then, yeah, I talked to almost all the schools in, in BC and, um, I think I, I'd always wanted to get out of BC for, for university, um, experience something new. Um, and then I think it was Christmas, Tommy came back home or something and, he was scrimmaging with our, our grade 12 or with our senior team at Vancouver college. And, um, I just thought he, he had gotten a lot better. Like he was, um, in such a short amount of time. Um, did you tell him or did you just keep that under your hat? No, no, I never told him that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, but he did develop, like he changed his, it was, it was weird because, I think before he left the Carlton, as a joke, we were shooting with our friend Jimmy outside and he started shooting like, you know, Michael Red used to shoot where he'd like slingshot it behind his head. And Tommy yeah. used to do that as a joke. And then he left for university and then came back at Christmas and he was like shooting like that seriously for some reason. Like that was his actual shot. Um, and it was going in like it was, but it was just weird that he would change his shot like that. Like just from a joke, it seemed like, but I don't know if he was like just trying new things, but, uh, no, I see he got a lot better. And then, um, I think we started, we met with coach smart when they played at the UVic tournament. Um, we went and watched and we talked to him and, um, he said he wanted me and, um, I told him like I wanted to play professional basketball and he said, um, that he thought Carlton was the best place for that. So. I saw Tommy improve and um, I had no idea like how much I would play. He didn't promise playing time or anything like that. I had no idea going in like what it would be like, but um, yeah, I just, I thought it was the best school in Canada. Um, They were obviously, they won a lot of national championships. They had a lot of guys that went pro out of Carlton. So I thought it was the best, uh, the best spot and obviously getting to to be with Tommy too was was a bonus Tommy was already there um mm-hmm. and yeah I love playing with Tommy so yeah you guys ever would have imagined what happened in your times there like would you you know if you had a flashback and you're at the UVic tournament and someone comes up to you with their popcorns like by the way all these all Canadians and this championship this is what's going to happen and like you and your brother are going to like dominate like did you ever think pretty crazy 
Yeah, well, it'd be at, like Carlton had won a lot before that, so I think okay, it was that real, didn't, real that didn't mean to... it still needed to happen, though. You know, there could have. I mean, yeah. it's, you still did it, right? Regardless of the the previous, yeah. it still happened. Yeah, but I just I think just the way we worked at Carlton and just the the way guys improved when they were there, like the way we just t- took things more seriously than everything that everybody else. I just felt like it was. We deserved to win most years, so I think that was just how we did things, and it wasn't really a surprise when we we won each year. So was it just like, um, did you feel that standard the minute you got there? Like things were different. You're like, all right, this is this is legit. Yeah, it was pretty intimidating when I first got there, especially since I wasn't very good and I didn't really know how to to work at that level. But I think once I got the hang of it, I think it was it was. It just gave gave me confidence and it gave everybody confidence that whatever game we went into, we were going to be more prepared and a better team. Mm. We can also acknowledge that uh, your version of not very good is still better than most. So we can also acknowledge that yeah. as well. <laughs> How about yeah. you there, yeah. bro? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, I guess I really had no... Because I, I didn't... In high school, I never really followed like Canadian university basketball. Like, sure. I, like, I didn't know. I, I when I heard of Carlton, I heard they'd won championships before, but I didn't like. My focus was so in the U.S. and Division One basketball. I had no concept of of Canadian university basketball. Like, we went to, um, we used to go to UBC women's games and then leave. For, for the men's games, you know? Um, mm-hmm. well, I think too, um, though, like you're, too. you're still a young dude, but in terms of technology and things like that, you couldn't pay $40 to get every can of West game streamed on your computer every weekend. Or, you know, the, the things that are out there now, the Instagram, you, you know, you can find a highlight or a score like your dad already talked about how he's just lurking and you can find out a score like that. Right. I mean, you're not yeah. old, but it just, that piece wasn't there yet in a, a big focus. So your focus mentally was the States, but also the what's out there in terms of production, what you can see wasn't there either. That's just, I mean, you mentioned, the, I giggled when you mentioned the CD with coach Disbro, right? I'm like, for people that don't yeah. know, that's something you put in a DVD player and hope it doesn't have a scratch <laughs> on it and looks okay. Right. Like, and that's what you had to do, yeah, right. you know? And, and so, you know, the, and that, that changed in your guys's career in the five years that you spent there drastically. And it's even more so. Sorry, I mean to cut you off, but it's it's an interesting point to make because you were in that sort of transition that it really took off. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because the yeah, I never, I guess I never re- even seen a team from Ontario play until mm-hmm. uh, Carlton came to UVic in my grade twelve year. You know. Um, but yeah, when I got there, I mean, it was like I think the hardest thing I've ever done in terms of basketball. Like, just mm-hmm. very, very competitive very demanding um and it was just like a a different level of like i thought that i kind of worked hard um on my own like in the gym in high school and then you get there and you say it's kind of nothing you know um (laughs) but then like yeah you realize like you kind of after your first year and you you play and and we won our first year it was you kind of realize how how different Carlton is from other schools and how much more serious each practice and each individual training session is. And then, um, you kind of think like, it's not that we deserve or or expect to win necessarily, but it's just, it's just one of those things that like, you feel like all that effort you put in, um, is going to pay off. And like every practice was so much harder than, than playing any game we played at, uh, in university, you know, so I think it's, it translates to now where it's, I don't think I could play in a game or in my career that's like harder than a Carlton practice or a summer scrimmage at Carlton. It's just, uh, I think it's, it's, it's helped me a lot because I think I don't really get in intimidated by situations anymore because I kind of went through all that earlier in, in university. So, um, yeah, it's just a different level and I haven't experienced anything like it since. It says a young man who is currently in Spain playing professional basketball and has played multiple times for our country. 
nothing has been harder than a Carlton basketball practice. So that puts a lot of things in perspective. <laughs> um, uh, I did actually buy, there's like a three practice set. And uh, Coach Smart did not disappoint in that three practice set. He did not hold back. <laughs> he was he was a re- he was a real one, as they would say. Uh, and uh, I was like, "Wow, this is this is good. This is interesting." He treated everyone equally, and it was intense. Yeah, it was intense. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and you know what? having the opportunity, never had a chance to see Carlton basketball in person until UBC hosted the nationals not long ago. And that's when his nephew was, um, I think Robbie was, is Robbie, right? Robbie was coaching. Yeah. Um, he yeah. was, he was up at SFU when I was playing college here. So I know him a little bit. Um, those are stories for off the podcast, but, uh, <laughs> there just was a different, there's just a different energy and compete level that you could feel on the floor. And I, and you've reflected on that, but just as an outside person, you could literally just feel it as, and I believe one of the games they were down and it was like, nothing changed. Same thing. No one got, no one got all worked up. Everybody stayed composed and it just continued to wear people down. And and that's just, I mean, everyone kind of knows there's that mystique about Carlton basketball, but to hear two people that walked it and lived it actually say it, um, given your current situations, I think really does give a lot. Um, how's your relationship with Coach Smart these days? I mean, is he someone that you refer to and and check in with, or is it kind of like, you know, you're just so busy with your lives that there's not a lot of time for that? Yeah, I feel like the first few years after I left, I was kind of uh, more in touch with him. I'd, I'd go back to Carlton a lot, a lot more and, and train in the summer. But uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, now we uh, don't really uh, talk too much. Like I see him, I saw him last summer a few times. Uh, I read it once, once in a while. He sends me a message, but I think... Uh, so he does own yeah. a cell phone, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't seem but like yeah. much of a texter to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think... Uh, I always, like, he's he's made a huge impact on my life, and I think whenever I'm in a, a tough, tough situation, I just kind of think about what, he, what he'd say and what he'd... Uh, what the, he'd think about it, and I think just, just how he was... Uh, he was always so honest and so he'd always get straight to the point. So I think um, in a way that just prepared me to, to, to deal with any situation that I, that I get in now, both, both in basketball and just in, in life in general, I think uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's helped a lot. And I think it's made me a, a lot stronger person. And it's funny how in those moments, probably they were hard, right? Like, you're like, this guy doesn't like me or why is he speaking to me this way? But I think that's huge in terms of once you become comfortable in your own skin, you're able to reflect back on it. You realize, wow, that really did impact me. That's huge. And so thanks for sharing that. How about you there, Phil? Yeah, same same thing. Like, yeah. uh, I think especially after my first few years, uh, after leaving Carlton, he was very involved in um, helping pick our agent, and um, we talked to him about like what teams were interested professionally and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that just kind of prepared us. Like eventually, like like he let us deal with that with that stuff on our own because um, he's he's got so many ex players, and um, obviously he's still around Carlton. He's got a lot of guys to help. Um, but uh, yeah, like I know he's sure. always there if if, uh, if I needed him, and obviously I think he's been one of the most impactful people in my life. Same as Tommy. Like I I think he I told him my my goals when I got there, and I think he kind of pushed me um, to reach those goals. And even though it was was tough sometimes, I think he always had really really high expectations of me, and. Uh, like, I think that is what kind of pushed me to, to be the best player I can be, even though, yeah, it was tough sometimes. Sometimes he, he told me things I didn't want to hear and, and made me do things that, uh, you know, took me out of my comfort zone in terms of kind of leadership or, or um, trying to be super, super competitive, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, again, like he's, he's, he's a, a tough coach, but he, he really, really wants you to do well and um yeah i think he's he's made a a huge impact on me awesome all right now in being aware of time 
there's a couple of things I want to touch on before we let you all go back to your regular lives. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. You're lying, but that's okay. You got to, I've got you now. So I want to talk, <laughs> just, I want you to share a little bit of reflection about kind of just Canada basketball, what it means to rep the leaf. And maybe, um, maybe if you could think about a game that sticks out to you for whatever reason, while you were wearing the Jersey, it could be crowd throwing pennies, could be a moment, something like that. Um, and then Lloyd, I want to talk a little bit, just a little bit about PGC basketball and that going forward, we talked about Doug beers and then we'll ask you just a few fun questions. We won't go through them all, but just get each of your thoughts and opinions. Cause I think from what I've heard for the first hour and a bit here, we'll get a, a wide variety of answers. How does that sound? Good. Yeah, sounds good. All right. So Lloyd, let's chat a little bit quickly about Doug and Doug beers and what he's trying to do with PGC basketball. Obviously, you know, us at a hoops journey, we're going to support him and stuff. And I think, um, I shared something on social media the other day and I've already had people message me saying like, wow, what an interesting model. It's very unique. That's super cool. And just sort of knowing that the club systems in BC are really set right now. And for mm -hmm. someone to step into that sort of world at this point is like, you'd have to have a unique angle. Right. And I think, yeah. I think what the people there are there doing, he's really created a unique thing. And so maybe we can just talk a little bit about where you see, that going and obviously you know you're moving away but you're going to be a part of it and 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 uh be supporting it yeah um well i mean doug really uh got fired up about this uh <laughs> this opportunity I, I don't know how he um you know but one day he just he said you know I, i'd like to start a, a basketball ac academy and uh and then he he said you know and i thought the same thing oh there's lots of those things out but then he you know, and this is, you know, just part of Doug's personality. He wanted to do things that, you know, so, you know, teach high-level high basketball, uh, train the kid hard, but also, you know, I think something that was missing was like, well, there's, you know, basketball, You, if you want to play, move on. You have to go through, like, at least in Canada, go through uh, uh, university, post-secondary, right? And so that's a different set of skills too, right? So there, mm -hmm. there's, there's complementary skills there. So he you also want to do things for um uh to, to you know to help kids with their schooling and and um and uh you know nutrition and sort of sort of like a kind of a holistic approach so not just focus on the you know what happens in the gym because lots of people can do skills and things like that and um and then the other thing was that he wanted to to target give this you know provide these opportunities for uh for kids that would not necessarily get the opportunity, right. That don't have necessarily means, right. So really targeting, uh, you know, kids that are, are maybe, uh, either, you know, economically or some, somehow disadvantaged and, and give them that opportunity. So all, all for free. So he's, uh, he's, he's willing to, to fund this out of, uh, you know, from, you know, with the help of his, his company. And, uh, and I, I know there's also, uh, some corporate donations as well. So he's really looking to, 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 push this and i think it's 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 going to be great right so it'll be like um um so he's got some good coaches there he's uh got some good young coaches uh you know i know isaiah solomon is going to be uh who played at ubc and also played at uh vancouver college uh, another fellow named alex Steele, all canadian from uh from uh university of alberta uh played professionally in europe uh, so uh who who's helped out coaching at the high school level uh Alex Devlin, who's a former Olympian and coached all over the world, is going to be uh, be there as well. And uh, I'm going to help out while I, while I can, just to you know to you know give kids a passion for basketball. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I mean, you know, the other unique thing that Doug wants to do is to like. There's lots of people like myself, like you, that have gone through basketball and have then you know maybe had professional careers, but then have gone into other things after that, right? And, mm -hmm. and who also see the, you know, uh, the benefits of being part of a team sport. And, uh, um, he wants to, to, uh, have those kids be able to interact with these people so that they could sort of get a, you know, a look into the future for what, what they could be. Right. And there's, you know, all across the professional thing. So people who have gone into professional sports and then later, you know, for the rest of their lives have to do something too, maybe. And, uh, and are, you know, you know, accountants or doctors or whatever, like, you know, so just give people, so it's kind of like a mentor, um, you know, provide them, with, you know, these kids opportunities to, to have mentors, you know, obviously anybody 
can join the academy. Like it's not just for, under, but uh, his focus is to help kids and provide opportunities for uh, kids that don't have the the resources to ordinarily do that. Yeah, I agree with the way you reflect on that. When Doug approached me, uh, this is the same thing. I was like, well, you know, do you know that there's a lot of these academies and things out there? But when he when he came over and we had a coffee and chatted, I was like, okay, this is it's unique, right? And I think. And one thing we can all say, regardless of our paths, is not just the game, but what it's taught us, right? In terms of time, time management, you know, being part of something bigger than yourself, being collaborative, being a communicator, being on time, all these different things you can yeah. take away from sport. And to, he's just providing people another opportunity. And like you mentioned, a big, big part of that is not necessarily people who just can't afford it, but just whoever to get a holistic approach. And so I think it's going to be a good thing and awesome that you're going to help out with it. Um, and they, you can find that at pgchoops.ca and they've also got an Instagram and it's going to be cool. So we'll be, uh, we'll be pumping it big here on a hoops journey and, and um, looking forward to seeing what it can be, become. And uh, yeah. you know, once, once you make your move, you'll be watching from afar and uh, hopefully it goes well. I, hopefully I didn't ruin Isaiah too much. I had him on the U15 provincial team one summer. So. I remember I pick him up at the bus stop every day and all he wanted to do, coach, coach, man, you got to listen to Drake. I'm like, get off me about Drake. Okay? <laughs> you're in my, you're in my, you're in my whip. We're listening to 90s hip hop. Slow your roll here, son. Slow your roll. Okay? Yeah. Relax. And he's still, he'll, he'll still, he'll DM me like a great, a Drake clip or when a new album oh, comes really? out and I'm like, and it was like the little, with the goat, with the goat emoji. I'm like, yeah, listen, oh, my God. I can't deal with you. Is he part of Drake's posse or something? What is he might, might as well be. Maybe he's yeah, the one sending him all those TikToks <laughs> about the VC Saints rivalry. Maybe he's the one. Yeah, he's, the, he's got the intel. Really Freaking awesome. Isaiah, man. That oh guy's, my god, that guy's a clown. <laughs> that, it'd be good. His energy would be great for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Boys, just talk about that. Getting that first call or opportunity to to play for Canada. Um, I'm sure it's. I'm sure you you don't ever look take it for granted, right? Those moments that you have, but those first few times must have been super cool. And is there one memory or moment that sticks out for you um, having the opportunity, knowing that like people like myself who played, you know, university and like, it was a goal to play in the national team, just never had that chance, right? It, it's one of those things that is separates people in their career. So maybe just a little bit of reflection on that before we have some fun questions and get on our way. Um. Yeah, I think so. I think it was maybe eight years ago or nine years ago. I got the first, uh, uh, my first chance to play for the senior team. Um, and this was back when, when Dave Smart was the assistant. So I think that had a lot to do with it. He, uh, probably got me, got me in the door in, in that situation, but, um, yeah, like in terms of, yeah, but why, but why though, I'm going to pause you there. You haven't pumped your tires once. Probably because he knew you'd be a good teammate. He knew you'd accept your role. He knew you'd be organized and responsible. And when you get to that level, you can't, you know, there's been so many national teams that we've seen. Like we talked with Coach Triano about that Olympic run. He knows full well he didn't pick the best 12 talented guys. It was the, you know, the guys that were going to mesh and make the best team, right? So yeah. you're brushing it off saying Coach Smart. But I mean, they're not just going to take you if they don't think you're going to bring value. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. As long as we're aware of that. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, it's been a lot of games. I think the first real, um, so I got cut in 2015 before the, the Pan Am games. Um, and obviously that was pretty disappointing, but the next summer I got a chance to, I ended up starting for the the team we sent to, um, to the Philippines for the Olympic uh, last chance qualifier. Um, and I think that was, that was a really, really good experience for me. It was uh, just after my first, uh, first year pro, um, playing in Finland, which wasn't, isn't the best league, but, um, and at the end of the, like by the end of the summer now I'm, I'm playing against, uh, like teams like France and, and Turkey, which are all either Euro league or NBA players. So I think it was a really, at a, at a, at a young at an early stage of my pro career it was a really great, great chance to really uh, get tested against some of the best players in the world. Um, and I, I did, did okay. Like I had some good moments, some bad moments, but I think uh, from that moment on, I just felt like that was my, uh, 
but we didn't make it that year. So I think from that moment on, it was thought it was my my goal to really be part of a team to either go to the Olympics or help them qualify to the both the Olympics and World Cup. So I think um, these last two two cycles have been really a really great experience and really a really uh, fun opportunity. I think um, especially now with how it's set up, it gives a lot of guys who wouldn't probably make the team to go to the Olympics a, a chance to play and really represent their country. Um, and I feel just since I tried to get it where where guys commit to a, a certain period of time where there's not too much uh, not too much in and out with guys coming going in back, like back and forth with it with the with the team and stuff. So I think um, mm-hmm. I feel like we've grown as a group, like the guys who've been part of the this winter core that we that we've had these last few years. But um, yeah, this like these these windows are what I what I'll really remember for for my national team experience. Um, I think the summer is summer is different with the guys, with, the, with the NBA guys coming in and out. Um, but like these the the teams that we go to with these windows with these tough trips to South America. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, those those are the the games and moments that I really, I'll really cherish and that I'll that I'll miss uh, miss when I when I'm when I'm uh, when I'm away from it. So I think I think we all all the guys who who made that sacrifice uh, deserve a lot of credit. Yeah, people don't really realize like what it takes. Hey, like just jump on a plane, get there, mesh, compete. You know, like it's pretty wild, and and you're in the middle of a you know, as well as like, you're not an NBA guy, you're in the middle of a, of a contract and playing professionally right now, you know? So I think there are a lot of elements that people really overlook and it's good. That's good that you mentioned all that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. For me, I think, uh, I had, while I was in your university, I had a lot of time, um, to go to a bunch of like senior team training camps and play some exhibition games. And, um, I think it was like a struggle early on. Like it was a different level of basketball. Um, and obviously coach smart was, was involved and, um, he kind of helped me get in the door and it was, they were, he was always telling me to obviously be more confident, be more aggressive. And I remember everybody, all the coaches, uh, even Steve Nash, while he was there talking to me, like, yeah, you gotta be more aggressive. Like when you're in the game, like, um, because I was very, very tentative with the senior team. Um, and then I think my my first time actually making the team was when we went to the uh, Olympic qualifiers. I think it was 2016 uh, in Mexico with like, I was on the team with 10 other NBA guys and I actually started to play well. Um, and just being part of that team gave me a lot of confidence. And um, now I feel like whenever they ask, I have a kind of obligation to go because um, Mm. it took a while for me to get to that point. And I know they gave me maybe more chances and um, not that I, than I deserve maybe because they could have given that spot to other guys and um, took me three, four, four years to be really confident and and earn my spot on the team. So um, anytime uh, Rowan, Rowan Barrett asked me, um, I feel like I have to go because I owe him um, a lot for giving me that chance and kind of sticking with me all those years. Um, but yeah, my favorite game, uh, it's actually a loss. It was a few years ago. Uh, we had a, it was one of the windows. Um, we played Dominican at home and beat them. Uh, and then we had to fly to Dominican to play them again uh, in the Dominican. Um, and we had Andrew Nicholson on the team in one of the windows, which was lucky because usually we don't get guys like that. Uh, and he killed them the first game. He had like 25 points. He was dunking, hitting threes. Then we get over there, uh, and then he gets in foul trouble. And then I think he he had two fouls or three fouls, and then he got an offensive foul, and then a technical foul, and then he was out of the game. So we lost our best player. And then two of our other centers get fouled out. Uh, so we're down like 15 in the first half or something. Um, and we managed to kind of grind back the second half, get it close. Uh, Connor Morgan was there. He was, he was like our only big left. Um, and this is, I've heard this, I wasn't on the bench at the time, but apparently he's saying on the bench that I'm going to hit a 
I'm going to hit the game winner this game. Like he's just telling everybody that. I don't know why, but he's going to, he's telling the guys on the bench, I'm hitting the game winner. So obviously all those guys fouled out. He gets to go in the game. We all know uh, how much down Connor to... likes the paint too. Hey, loves being in the paint, that guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're down seven. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so we're down two and we have an inbounds, uh, Gordy Herbert, which is the coach draws up a play. Um, I don't think it was for Connor, but he's just standing in the corner, uh, like he does, obviously. Um, so I think Keza goes back door, kicks it out to Connor. We're down two and he hits a three and he runs to the, like the tunnel, like, like game over game winner. And I chase after him. I jump on top of him. And then the trainer comes out and says, guys, you got to come back. You got to come back. Apparently they're they're looking at it to see if it was a two or a three. <laughs> um, so, so they look at it and then they say it's a two. So the game's tied. We have to go to overtime, and obviously we lose. Like we're out of bigs. We have guards guarding their their foreman and stuff. But yeah. then a video comes out after of like someone from the crowd filming, and it's he was clearly behind the line. So they changed that. the the yeah they changed the three to a two without without actually seeing it, you know? Mm-hmm. But just the thought, like, the the moment when he hit the shot and I thought we won, it was, like, the biggest, like, I feel like one of the biggest moments of my career. Like, so, so excited. Because I think before the game, too, we, we, it was, like, crazy traffic. We, the bus driver took, like, a weird route to the game. Like, he made some weird loop. And we ended up getting mm. to the game like 25 minutes before the game too. So I wonder like why weird. that happened. <laughs> yeah. It's just a bunch of weird like coincidences and <laughs> we're tired from the travel and the, the bus driver and like our bigs falling out. Like it was just like a crazy, crazy game that we kind of didn't expect to win. But when I thought we won and Connor hit the shot and he was telling people before that I'm going to hit the game winner. So I'm, I'm counting that game as a win because I mean, something <laughs> happened there. I don't know what happened, but uh, it was just one of those like crazy experiences that you, you like go through only with the, with the national team. I feel like, like short, mm-hmm. like long travel, short amount of time and a uh, difficult situation. And you come out and play in the Dominican, which is a tough, like the crowd is, is pretty crazy and stuff. So mm-hmm. um, just like a lot of, just a lot of moments like that where, before before you go you're like oh it's such a long flight and uh you don't want to go practice you want to like sleep for for a couple days before but um once you start playing and you play the games and you win some some big games and some tough places such a fun fun experience and after you leave you're always really really thankful that you you went so um yeah there's just like no no moments i've had like like national team games and and playing with uh especially the the winter core guys we've had for the last couple of years um it's been like so much fun um and uh yeah every time i love going with those guys it is funny hey like win lose or draw no matter how much success you have when you look back on it it is those moments that you can't put into words unless people were there you know you can try your best to explain the story in those situations but the group that you have the coaches all that stuff that's really what it's all about. You know, when you look back on it, it's just those memories and fun moments or wild moments. Hey, it's just been, yeah, I think in the moment you just, you feel like really close to your teammates and you're all like, you're not playing for, for a contract or, or to get more money next year. It's just, everyone's coming to play for the national team and you're all there for a reason. You're kind of all in the tough situation together. And it's, uh, yeah, it's nothing like, uh, Nothing like those games. Well, as someone who's a fan of Canada basketball and always wants to see us succeed, um, I personally, and I think that is one of the good things about social media is now we we are more apparent and aware of what you guys have to go through in these windows, right? And it is a grind. And like Tommy was talking about that reflection of just sort of, it's, it can be a struggle and, and we appreciate you and are always thankful for you guys stepping up when when your number is called because, you know, I'm sure there's guys that, like you said, long flights and whatever it could easily just say no, but the sense of pride and sort of responsibility of someone like Rowan who's stuck his neck out for you before. I think that those are important things for people to take away. Um, so thanks for that. Ready for some fun questions? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I've narrowed it down to uh I've narrowed it down to four. A huge one on the show is ketchup on macaroni, but I know none of you would do that disgusting thing. So we're gonna move on from that, right? <laughs> Right, no, for sure. 
Uh, me? No. Yeah, it looks. Yeah. You got okay. 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 Right. <laughs> okay. Got a look there. I was like, oh man. <laughs> we'll go. Uh, okay, so you get the best seat in the house. Uh, artist can be dead or alive. Who are you going to see? And you can do a couple if you can't narrow it down to just one. Who's someone? And we'll go. Let's go. Let's go. Youngest to oldest for this one. We'll go youngest to oldest. So you got best seat in the house. You can take your partner, your spouse, a buddy. Doesn't matter. Who are we going to see? Uh, I think right now I would go Frank Ocean. Ooh, I don't know who that is? Yeah, yeah, Frank Ocean for sure. He. I feel like uh, it's so rare to out. see him. Uh, yeah. Like you don't he see him, really, like he doesn't really tour. or yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I feel like that would be the one that I would go to. He closed out. I went to Pemby Fest, like oh, probably nine, ten years ago, and I went because Outcast is my favorite, and he closed it out, and he was awesome. Yeah. And like you said, it was random. Like I was like, wow, Frank Ocean, really? And he was really good. Wow. We have yeah. not like 100, 100 plus episodes. No one has said Frank Ocean. All right. <laughs> <laughs> point guard, point guard, shooting point guard. I like it. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Tommy, what do we got? I have to say Michael Jackson. Oh. Yeah. So I feel like just nobody... for it all, for it all, right? Yeah. A combination yeah. of singing and dancing. I feel like nobody really does that now. And not like you can't do both. Yeah. So like he is, I believe he, I believe that we would say, what am I supposed to say to that? Cap? Facts? I don't know. Cap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so cap is like a lie, right? No, so no cap. No cap. Yeah. yeah on no God. Cap. On yeah. God. Yeah. I think uh I think maybe Javon Shepard said Michael Jackson, Chris Joseph. There's been a few. But those that know, know. Yeah, good call. Dad liked that too. He was, Dad was impressed with that one. Okay, Dad, let's hear it. Take us back. That, that's my guy. Tommy. Whoa, Trump, he God. stole. You tell me, oh, that's Michael oh. Jackson. Like, who else would you pick? Like, like that's, you know, not, not Jackson. Like, Michael Jackson from, you know, his thriller and that stuff. That's like, there's no other, you want, like, full the full package there. But anyway, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Bill, are you leaving left out right now? Or feeling left out? Or are you good? No, 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 no. Bill, I'm you good. still I'm like your out. choice? Yeah, 100%. Okay. What's um, Frank? Is he related to Billy Ocean? Sure. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> he might be, actually. You bring up a good point. I'm going to hit Google after this episode. And find... <laughs> I know Billy Ocean. Uh, I know, I know Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I love it. See, we could have let it just go like this for three hours. This is what I'm saying. It just made it a total gong show. Um, all right. Knowing that there's pockets of your life in kind of chapters, let's talk about who have been some of the port- most important people in your life along the way, along that journey. We'll go middleman first. That's you, Tommy. Um, so how would you divide these pockets? Just up to you man to who me. who yeah i mean i see a i see a ring on your finger um, right so don't yeah. leave that one right, don't leave that one out all right all right <laughs> can't be getting in trouble after this episode dog <laughs> uh, yeah just when you yeah, think about so think, it like who are some of the most important people for you uh yeah i think like until i guess my first 17 18 years it would have would have been my parents um just now the, the impact they made on me, I think it was, we lived a good life growing up. We had a lot of opportunities and I think that really, really prepared me for life afterwards. And I felt comfortable enough to really pretty much move away from home when I was 18 and kind of live my life independently. So I think they did a good job of getting me prepared for that. Um, mm-hmm. And then I think it would have been Dave my uh, five years at Carleton. Just, um, being another father figure, um, give me a lot of support, uh, knowing me and Phil were away from home. Um, and, um, uh, especially with us losing our mom, um, my, uh, my, uh, early in my Carlton career, I think he really took care of us and really kind of kept, uh, kept an eye out for us and really just, um, just really helped us along the way to really maximize our potential. And, 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 uh, just made sure we were, we were okay uh, living our lives. 
Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, my wife and my, my son now, my, uh, my daughter's going to be born in about two months now. So I've got a growing family and I think, um, yeah, it's just that adds a different aspect of life. I think, um, it kind of, uh, it kind of just makes, puts things in perspective. I think it's not, not really about me anymore. It's just about my family and I'm not just playing basketball for fun. I need to to play well and kind of just make money to support your family and, and, uh, for as long as possible. So I think I don't, I wouldn't, wouldn't have, uh, in high school, the university wouldn't have thought I wanted to play. Even if I did play pro, I wouldn't have thought I wanted to play that long. But now I think, uh, now that I have a family, I just really want to play as long as possible. So we, so we have the best life, uh, best life possible. So I think, um, that's really, really, really important for me. Um, and I think it's my wife too. It's, it's hard for her. I guess it's, it would have been hard for her to moving over, living in Europe. Um, not really much to do unless she, uh, she played basketball last year on a third division here, team here in Spain, but but every other year she hasn't really had much, uh, much to do. So it's a big, big adjustment for her. And she's had to find ways to, to stay active and stay, to stay involved in, in, in like, in like my life and, and, uh, our son's life. So I think it's, uh, a really, uh, really good experience. And I think we, and we, I'm hoping to, to kind of play as long as possible and trying to build a life in Europe, uh, before we move back, uh, back home to Canada. Amazing. Love it. Well said, man. Who wants to go next? Pops? Well, I, I'd say, uh, you know, my, my parents, you know, the first part of my life, um, you know, they came from the West Indies, you know, they, they met in, uh, in England and they brought us over to, to uh, Canada and we started a thing here and they really, you know, like from where they came, they really, you know, provided us, uh, my, my brother and sister and I with opportunities to do whatever. Right. And, um, you know, so I think that was, that was great. And, um, and then I would say that the next big phase for me would be, uh, you know, just all the, the, you know, the people through my journey of like, as a young adult and, you know, like, you know, my elementary school teacher who, you know, saw an opportunity for, you know, Miss Miss Loren, she got me into track and field. She saw just some, you know, kind of a gangly young kid out there and she pointed me in that direction and, you know, and uh, another track coach, Carl Savage, who, who, you know, I was a hurdler and he thought, you know, he was kind of disappointed when I got so into basketball because he thought, oh, I could have been like a, a, a good hurdler and, you know, but just, you know, these, these adults, right. Uh, uh, Doug and Bill Disbro and, you know, my coaches at, you know, all those, those mentors I had uh, at UBC and UVic Ken and, and, uh, and those sorts of, uh, those sorts of people. And then the, the, you know, I think most impact was, you know, our family, uh, Tommy, Phil, Diane and I, you know, that was like, you know, it was such a, a great time, you know, raising the, the kids and, and, uh, you know, it, it sort of showed me that I wasn't just like, uh, the, you know, competitive, whatever, like go, go, go. Per- I didn't have to be that person. I could be compassionate and, and, you know, and caring for other people and put them before myself. Um, mm-hmm. so that was a, a great phase. And, and then, uh, uh, and so now I have a new family now with uh, Christine and, uh, and, and, you know, she has a, has a family with kids. And so we have now this bigger family. And I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, you just kind of move on in phase of your life. And there's always people around you that, uh, that uh, you know, keep you in check and, and, uh, and give you something to, you know, to be, uh, to look forward to every day kind of thing. So awesome. Yeah. And I know you move in soon will be even more special when the boys kind of just closer and just many more memories coming for you, which is awesome, you know? Yeah. Well, hopefully they, they stay out there. They may decide to move back here. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the risk. <laughs> no pressure, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's all okay. good. They got, everyone's got to live their life, right? Yeah. You got it. 
Yeah. All right, Phil. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously being the youngest, like, yeah, I looked up to to Tommy and and my parents, and um, yeah, I had like re- really really good role models, and then um, I kind of feel like my life was, I guess, a little easier just kind of knowing that they were there and um, knowing uh, with Tommy that he would he was older and he he gone through some things before me and um like we could always uh do stuff together and like we were always very very close growing up and my parents um i think they um kind of guided me really well like i um i think i made a few more mistakes kind of growing up like i wasn't like um i mean obviously not as good as Tommy in school. And I think I used to, in terms of basketball, I used to sulk a little bit when I didn't play well, like during the game, you know, like I, I, <laughs> I uh, like not after the game, I didn't feel bad, but like during the game, you could see that I was, I was not playing well and I was unhappy about it, you know, and they really, I think got that out of me really quick. Uh, and they were, they were tough on me about that because that, you know, is, is, is not acceptable. Um, so I think, yeah, like I just, I had really good, um, guidance from them and, and from Tommy and then, uh, moving into high school, like my, my friends, like I had, I had really, really good friends that, um, I played with, uh, at Vancouver college and they made me just love going to school. I love basketball. We used to play, uh, after school all the time and scrimmage and outside of practice. And, uh, that made it a really great experience. And then, Leading into college, Dave Smart, obviously, and he had a huge impact, Dave and, and Rob Smart. Um, and then a lot of teammates there, like too many to name, who kind of took me under their wing and um, kind of guided me along. And I think they they saw I had some potential and they kind of were, were tough on me, but then they would, they would talk to me after and um, try to get me um, to be the best player I could be. And I think I owe a lot to them. Um, and then, yeah, leading to a professional, like I'm, I'm married now, my wife, um, kind of like Tommy said, it puts, puts things in, in perspective and, um, you have something more to, to live for. And, um, with my wife, you, you get excited about, about the future, you know, like before everything was well basketball and the next contract and, and just playing well, but now, um, you get excited for stuff outside of basketball, just coming home and um, life after basketball together. And when, when you, we move back to Canada, our life after that. So um, yeah, just a lot of things at, at different points in my life. But uh, I think all those people are, are still having huge, huge impacts on me today. Wow. Look at the three of you. Whew. That's good stuff right there. <laughs> Church on a Thursday, fellas. Let's go. <laughs> All right. The next two should be pretty quick answers, um, especially if you know this next one like the way I would. So you're at home or in Europe or wherever you are. You're on the road, whatever it is, feeling a little munchy. You're going to watch some hoops, watch a movie. What bag of chips are we getting? What is the greatest bag of chips you could possibly get? Whoever wants to go first can go. Oh, Lloyd's ready. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Clearly, the uh, Miss Miss Vicky's jalapeno chip. Oh my god! Yeah, come on. Here we go. <laughs> with a coke, with a coke to wash it down. It's like it's a okay. <laughs> on ice or out of, out of the can or on ice. Well, uh, no ice. It's in a can, but the can has yeah. been in the fridge. It's like cold. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah it's just like hits you in the throat a little bit. Okay. Nice. nice. <laughs> Not shaking okay. or anything. There's no fizz. It's just nice and smooth. I can go through. I, I limit myself to one can. I could go for two sometimes, though. <laughs> okay, Phil. With, based on that reaction, you need to step up here. Like what? That was like a big roll. Like, yeah. yeah. I, 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 uh, I would have Miss Vicky's if it was there. Like I wouldn't. I'd never buy Miss Vicky's. Like if they're around, I'd have some. Right. Um, I think wow. Doritos sweet chili heat. It'd be my favorite. Um, what? We what? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't know. Like, I don't know if they had it when I was younger, but I just remember having it in college all the time. And it was just, it's the best. It's, it's kind of like flavor. the light purple bag. Is that it? Something like that? Yeah. No, it's the no, it's black one, I think. I don't oh, know. Oh, it's the, black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. For purple sure. is what? I don't even know what purple is. Yeah. Yeah, I think purple's a new Sweet chili heat, though, you get too many of those, the tongue gets a little numb there. It's like, man, you know, you got to be able to, you got to have some discipline and be able to, you got to gotta be able to put the bag away. Like, I don't think you can get through a lot of those without, you know, you wake up in the morning, you're like, man, that's too much sweet chili, but hey. Okay. Oh, yeah, we've got no, too spicy so. I think, here. I think I can, I can finish a full bag for sure. Okay. Tommy? Um... I'd have to go with Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> Says a lot about oh, you, I think. Very cool. Just chill, you know? <laughs> you feel you. That's fair. I got you. I like all good selections. No, no, no harm, no foul here. I mean, I can see a little disappointment, but I'll let the family figure that out later. That's not for me to decide. <laughs> Okay, and then we're going to put you on blast here for the last one. Um, who would you like to see? Who has a good story out there, a hoops journey that you think um, is is worthy of kind of just sitting down and chopping it up with a good person? Um, but the big thing is you got to help us get this person. So you're the connect. You're the plug. All right. So don't throw a name out there that, you know, don't be, don't be saying, oh, I think Drake would be a good person to talk to. Unless <laughs> <laughs> well, then you Drake realize that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> PGC basketball going to be sponsored by OVO quick here. Yeah. <laughs> so who comes to mind? Is there someone out there? Have you have you had Howard before? Have not. I think Howard Kelsey. I think he ties a lot of, uh, at least for my thing, a lot of people have uh, seen Howard play. Absolutely. Yeah. Big impact on the game. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Boys. Mm. I can try and get Cassius Robertson. It's another Canadian teammate here in Spain. Um, but yeah, I think he uh he was kind of like an underrated player growing up, I think. Didn't go to a big uh big school, but kind of lately he's kind of uh stepped up his game, has become a really uh really good player. So I think he'd have a, he'd have a good story. Amazing. Okay. Bill, uh, have you had uh, Rob Smart on here? No, no. I think Rob would be really, yes. really good. Um, yes, I think he has a lot of good, good stories of like playing at obviously and coaching at Carlton and then SFU. Uh, and I think he'd, he'd be really good. Like he's got yeah, personality, he'd, man. He'd go. He's a funny dude. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Didn't even cross my mind. See, this is why we asked the question. All right. Yeah. Pressure's on, fellas. Time to get on the iMessage as soon as we get <laughs> off here. <laughs> now, I'm just going to say thank you so much. I mean, it's super cool. This was a fun experience, but seeing all three of you sort of be able to interact and stuff gives me an idea of what, when you do all get together, what, what life can be like, which is probably a lot of fun and a lot of chitter chatter. Um, I'll let the young, I'll let the young fellas just if you have any last reflections or thoughts um, before we let you go, but thank you for, you know, I, it's been a crazy week here for you guys. And I really appreciate you carving out some time to, uh, to sit down with us. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. I think it's, uh, yeah, I think, I think basketball in Canada is growing and it's always, it's, it's an honor to kind of be a part of the, uh, I guess now older generation, but I guess kind of in the middle, but I think, um, yeah, I'm just happy to do whatever I can to kind of be a role model for the the younger younger guys coming up. And I think um, in uh, ten years we're going to be one of the better better countries in the world in terms of basketball. And there's going to be a lot of a lot of good players, a lot more good players coming out of coming out of Canada. So I'm I'm excited to see the, what's in store for the future. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's been a, a good time. I think yeah, like Tommy said, I think Canada basketball is like really really growing um i do miss like bc basketball a lot i feel like uh since going to carlton and kind of moving to ontario i've kind of become a bit like disconnected from from bc basketball but i think some of the the best times of my basketball career for playing for the provincial team um at vancouver college and just being around 
uh, basketball in BC because I think um, people people like really really love basketball uh, in British Columbia and uh, yeah I wish I I wish I was around more and I hope I, I get back and kind of get more more in the scene. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, if you're bored, I'll uh, I'll DM you the uh, live stream link and you can watch. There's they it's amazing now the Langley events the one eight or the four a you can log in if you want to just watch a high school game and see what what it's all about. I'll send you that stuff and you can. Uh, but you have to be pretty damn bored to do that. <laughs> nah, you're probably a basketball. It's a sickness for all of us. But I'll send you that. And you can check it out. But yeah. And then, Dad, before you finish up here, for me, one of the the funnest parts of this episode was a few times in the episode, you probably didn't know it. You're just sitting there with your hand on your chin while the boys are talking and your face and your expression just says it all. You can see it in your eyes, just how you feel about your two kids. And I'm sure there's so many moments, um, not just these days, but throughout your life where you've just sat back and just been such a proud father and you've done an outstanding job in the way they speak, who they are as people. You can sense that. Um, and I could just tell there were so many moments in this episode, you're just listening and it seemed like your face was just beaming. You didn't even maybe even realize it, but I'll let you have the final word as the, uh, as the OG of this episode. OG. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm definitely proud of the boys and, you know, like the their basketball is, is great, but, uh, you know, I'm especially happy of the, about the, you know, the young men that they've, uh, turned out to be and, uh, you know, I think, you know, as a parent that you can't ask for anything more, right? Like your profession is just, you know, part of who you are and you're, you know, but, uh, you know, what you do, but like who you are, I think is, uh, you know, well, anyway, I'm really proud of them. And I, I know their, their mom would have been proud of them as, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And with basketball, you know, it's so uh, like, I remember playing against uh, you in a pickup game, like, you know, like when I was still playing, I, I, I don't know how old I was, but I just remember like, it's, it's interesting how basketball, you know, like there's probably, you know, maybe less than 60 degrees of separation. And I didn't know that you, where you played or wherever I just played. I just remember in the games we were playing, like I was bitter because like, I was frustrated. How come I can't stay in front of this guy? He's a big guy and he's get he's, you know, like, you know, I remember playing, I think Richard Coley was playing in that game. And I remember yeah. because I was trying to get around him and he wasn't as quick, but he was grabbing me and stuff. And it's like, you know, but, it's, but, but, uh, you know, like that's one thing I remember with teammates and, you know, there's things that, you know, you're competing and you get, fr- but then like when you're finished, then it's just, it's done and you're just friends. And, and, uh, and I think that's the great thing about, about basketball and, um, you know, just, meeting all of you know people like you and uh i think it's such a such a good thing you have friends for life you got it man you nailed it that's a great way to summarize this episode and um i couldn't agree more and being able to have the opportunity to do this podcast and hear people's stories and connect people even more has been really special and this has been a special episode of first for the for hoops journey and um on behalf of myself and corbin we wish the three of you you know you got lots coming up in terms of family stuff, basketball mm-hmm. stuff, health, happiness, stay safe, um, be well. And uh, we do appreciate you. I am going to reach out though. You better follow up on who you, you said follow you'd follow up, up on. Yeah. Can I make one more thing? <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, I have to uh, shout out uh, uh, my friend, uh, Gabe Lee. So okay. he's, he, played, he played grade eight uh, basketball at, uh, I coached him at, uh, at uh, Mangaroo College and he, he'd be bitter if I didn't get this out there. And I, I, I do think he was, he's the best uh, grade seven basketball in BC history. Okay. So, great. <laughs> so the thing, the caveat is, is that Gabe, Gabe is the, uh, Gabe is the same size he was now as he was in grade seven. So that's, <laughs> that's something to do with it. But, but uh, so I had to, I had to let Gabe know, Gabe, I have your back there, and uh, and uh, there you go. Don't say I haven't done anything for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how you're going to take that, but let it go, man. You're a good basketball player before anybody had any armpit hair. But with <laughs> Amazing episode. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to our sponsors, and we'll see you on the next one. 